Thanks to Honey for sponsoring this update. Honey is a free browser extension that searches the web for discount codes while you shop so you get the best deals. To try it out, visit joinhoney.com slash the know. Welcome to The Now, I'm Ashley. Fallout 76 is launching later this year. Gonna be very exciting for a lot of people, I think, but don't look for it on Steam. A Bethesda representative told PC Gamer that both the beta and the full game will only be available on Bethesda.net. That's significant because it makes Fallout 76 the first major Bethesda game to skip Steam. Although, in the past, smaller games like Quick Champions and Fallout Shelter both launched on the Bethesda site and then eventually found their way to Steam. As for the beta, Still doesn't have an exact date yet, but according to a Bethesda fact, it will contain the full game and it will save your progress for launch. The game's scheduled to release on November 14th for PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Soon as we get that beta date, we will let you know. Right now, what we know is it's sometime in October and the Xbox One version is coming first. So we'll keep you posted. Since Pokemon Go launched a few years ago, believe it or not, it's been more than two years now, which is kind of crazy. Players have been clamoring for one magical feature. Well, no, a couple magical features. Things like, you know, trading is great and, you know, that's there, cool. But one other one, real important for Pokemon, PvP. Now it looks like that is finally gonna happen. In an interview with Polish publication Graham, Niantic's head of marketing said that PvP will come to the game by the end of this year. Niantic also wants to tweak the in-game friendship and trading features they rolled out in June. And while Pokemon Go isn't the cultural phenomenon that it once was, there are far fewer people like walking into traffic and <laughs> causing these stampedes. Uh, it's still got a very dedicated fan base. It's made $1.8 billion since it launched in 2016, uh, which is impressive for a game that doesn't technically cost anything. It's all about buying the egg incubators, am I right? And players still typically spend about two million dollars a day on the app just all up which is very very impressive Dragon Ball Fighters is the hot new fighting game these days. Its fans turned out in force recently to watch its final night at the Evolution Championship Series. Get Hype said the game's finals on Sunday hit 258,000 concurrent viewers on Twitch, which is the most viewers ever for an EVO main event on Twitch. All those viewers saw the multi-game pro Dominique Sonic Fox McLean take the win over rival Goichi Gowon Kishida, but there were plenty of other popular fighting games on display it wasn't the only one, especially Street Fighter V. That game more than doubled Dragon Ball Fighter's viewership for the first two days of EVO, so safe to say both games have very large, very active fan bases. Fighting scene is a big one. The Android version of Fortnite could arrive very, very soon. We've heard from Epic Games, it's coming this summer. Data miners, XDA developers dug into the game's installer APK file and they say the game could launch as soon as this week on Android and it could be a Samsung exclusive on the Galaxy Note 9, which is due out on Thursday. The data miners say they found evidence that customers who pre-order the new smartphone will receive 15,000 V-Bucks, which is the currency in Fortnite. The mobile version of Fortnite launched on iOS this spring and Epic CEO Tim Sweeney said recently they're gonna bypass the Google Play Store on Android after he said their fees are too high. He just doesn't really see the point. He doesn't feel like they need them. You can get it straight from them. So eh. no confirmation uh, on this little detail from Epic just yet. But if this is true, Android players could have their game, their hands on the game very, very soon. And hey, then Fortnite can make even more money. <laughs> There aren't too many hard and fast rules when it comes to video games these days. There's all kinds of stuff going on, but uh, here's one that's usually uh, a pretty hard and fast rule. Demos are free. Unless you're the Amazon UK store, apparently. Nintendo Life noticed that the shop's doing a kind of weird thing. It's charging a penny for demos of Switch games. Why? So that includes demos for games like Octopath Traveler, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Sushi Striker. Of course, tons of Amazon customers are criticizing the practice in reviews, calling it a scam, pointing out you can get all these downloads for free on Nintendo's eShop. No word yet on why Amazon is doing this. I mean, they need a little bit of extra change. Maybe they're trying to get all the pennies out of circulation <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Who knows? That's just such a weird amount to be charging. It seems like... I don't know. There's got to be something going on there. Would love to know what it is, but just so you know, those demos are going to break the bank. 
The newest Hearthstone expansion goes live today, featuring some brand new cards, new mechanics. It's all centered around the villainous bomb throwing Dr. Boom. The expansion is called The Boomsday Project, and it's got 135 new cards, which are guaranteed to shake up the game's meta. Blizzard is also introducing some new mechanics Omega cards, which become more powerful if you play them at 10 mana, and Project cards, which benefit both players when played. The expansion's also going to introduce legendary spells, which are a first for the game. There's also also a single player campaign called Puzzle Lab that will release a few weeks later. That's coming August 21st. That'll require you to solve more than 100 puzzles before you square off against the good doctor himself. The expansion goes live at various times throughout the day depending on what region you're in. In the US, it's all going down around noon central time, so by the time this video comes out, it, it will be too. It looks like Final Fantasy XV, despite being in development hell for a decade, managed to sell very, very well for Square Enix. Twitter user BazTech noticed the games passed 7.7 .7 million copies worldwide, according to the product info page on the game's Japanese site. That's good news for Final Fantasy fans, because Final Fantasy XV was widely seen as make or break for the franchise, because it did take a very long time for them to get out, and it's fallen on some hard times after a very troubled rollout of the previous game, Final Fantasy XIV, which went so well that they just relaunched it and then pretended that the original launch had like never happened. Uh, but believe it or not, 7.7 .7 million copies may not be enough for Square Enix to consider it a hit. Uh, like a success, sure, like it did good, okay, cool. Is it a hit? Eh. Back in 2016, game director Hajime Tabata said that Final Fantasy XV had to sell 10 million units over the course of its life in order to be considered a true success. He later clarified and said that was how many the team hoped to sell, not how many it would take to turn a profit though. Uh, at any rate, hopefully it's sold enough to keep the series going because I always want more on my Final Fantasy. Hey, did you know that uh, Superman is a huge gamer? Look, make him as a surprise, but Henry Cavill loves some video games, like a lot. He's gone on record loads of times about his addiction to World of Warcraft. Uh, he famously ignored a call from Zack Snyder telling him he'd got the role of Superman in Man of Steel because he was a little busy playing WoW. While promoting Mission Impossible, Cavill revealed he's currently playing through The Witcher 3 again and said how much he loves that game. Even more, he gushed about the original books the game's based on as well, so you know, he's a pretty real deal fan of that series. When IGN asked if that meant he'd want to be part of Netflix's upcoming Witcher series, perhaps playing, oh, I don't know, something like Geralt, Cavill's response wasn't at all cagey. He said, absolutely, yeah, that would be an amazing role. Look, now being a fan of something doesn't automatically mean you'd want to spend like eight years locked into that one property, but now Cavill's put that out there, you can bet Netflix is thinking long and hard about approaching him for the project. He's definitely not the person that I immediately had in my mind for that role, but it could be interesting. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, that's not it for the Super Person Universe news today though. DC is working on a Supergirl movie. The movie won't have any connection to the CW show, as is the typical DCEU MO. I mean, come on, their movie Flash is different from their TV Flash, and man, I, their TV Flash is great. So I was a little bit like, I don't know about that, but hey, if it means that we're not gonna get like a rom-com, um, I'd be down. Warners has hired 22 Jump Street screenwriter Oren Uziel to bring Kara zor to the big screen once more. Character last saw her own movie way back in a very weird and oddly creepy 1984 film. Pretty safe to assume DC is going for a slightly different tone, higher budget than the last Supergirl movie. Uh, Kara is Kal-El's cousin and has been a staple of the DC Comics universe since 1959. It was really only a matter of time before Warner Brothers started working on a Supergirl movie since the success of Wonder Woman. They've switched focus to a lot of female heroes and villains. Batgirl and the Harley Quinn lead anti-hero team Birds of Prey are both on the fast track at the studio as well. So we'll see, fingers crossed, I'd like it to do well. Dave Bautista is once again speaking out in support of his fired Guardians of the Galaxy director, James Gunn, going all out. He's calling out Disney for bowing to what he described as a smear campaign by fascists and cyber Nazis. When asked about his plans for further appearances as Drax the Destroyer, he said, I will do what I'm legally obligated to do, but Guardians without James Gunn is not what I signed up for. He added that it was nauseating to work for Disney right now. <laughs> Damn dude, tell us how you really feel. Uh, he said that, uh, over the course of the weekend. And then Monday, he actually went a step further saying, if Marvel doesn't use James Gunn's completed Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 script for the third movie, he wants out. 
his words, where I'm at now, if they don't use that script, then I'm going to ask them to release me from my contract, cut me out, or recast me. I'd be doing James a disservice if I didn't. Bautista's by far been the most frequent and loudest cast member to speak up for Gunn after Disney fired him over some decade-old super gross jokes that he'd tweeted. Uh, he's also the only one to put his career on the line for the man who gave him his big break, even though every single one of the Guardians has released statements in support of Gunn since his departure from the franchise that he made famous. Disney probably unlikely to hire Gunn back uh, to direct, but this added pressure maybe means they'll use the script that he had planned for the third film, which currently still has a 2020 release date. Uh, Gunn said he had already turned in the script prior to the firing, so at the very least, even if he's not directing, maybe they'll work off the script to complete uh, what was always planned by him to be a trilogy for the Guardians, so we'll see. Also, Dude, Bautista, fucking spoilers, man. Am I right? <laughs> all right, that about does it for this roundup. Let us know what you think of all this news in the comments down below to make sure you get all the crazy news from every corner of the internet every weekday, like this video, and if you're new here, subscribe to The Know. Shout out to Honey for sponsoring this update. There's an amazing free browser extension called Honey that millions and millions of people use every day to save money. If you buy stuff online, whether it's video games, PC hardware, whatever, it makes sense to get the best deal you can. That way you can have more money to spend on other stuff or save if you're smart. That's where Honey comes in. While you shop, it scans and tests millions of discount codes to find the biggest discount on everything you're already buying online. Then, when you're ready to check out, it applies the best discount to your cart. That means you can stretch your budget further and buy more games. Look, I shop on Amazon a lot. It also does a lot of fun stuff with Amazon, like it'll look for sellers with lower prices. I I'm kind of a junkie at switch cases, accessories, headphones, you name it. I actually just recently bought new cameras for our studio uh, and found they, Honey found me the same cameras for $50 less and it was really, really great. So it didn't change what I was buying, but it did help me to spend less on it and that's really great. Uh, it, Honey works on Chrome. Firefox, Safari, all the major browsers so it's easy to give it a go and save money on all the stuff you're already getting. Visit joinhoney.com slash the know.